I am Denise Doolan, the Chief Editor of Frontiers in Immunology, Vaccines and Immunotherapeutics. And it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this Editor's E-Panel, reflecting on the inaugural symposia e-meeting on vaccinology in the age of pandemic, strategies against COVID-19 and other global threats, which was held in June 2020. Joining me today, I have colleagues from EMBO, Journal of Experimental Medicine and Nature Journals, to discuss the new and exciting advances that came out of the meeting, the state of the field, and what the new virtual format means to the scientific and publishing communities. Firstly, I will let each of my colleagues introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their journal and their role there. Okay, my name is Jeliko Djurjevic and I am a scientific editor at Embo Molecular Medicine. And um, at Embo Molecular Medicine, we are interested in the science that is on the interface between translational and clinical research and basic life science. Um, Embo Molecular Medicine is an open access journal um, and we welcome original studies that are performed in um, animal models in cells and um, that demonstrate evident human disease relevance. Hi, my name is Gaia Trincucci. I'm a scientific editor at Journal of Experimental Medicine. Um, Journal of Experimental Medicine is an open, is a, a broad scope journal um, and we are interested in all uh, aspects of um, uh, human diseases and uh, um, the relationship with uh, also the molecular side of it. Hi, my name is Francois Meyer. I'm an associate editor at Nature Microbiology, which is a Springer Nature journal that publishes the latest advances across all areas of microbiology. And my role as an editor there is that I handle different um, areas, including eukaryotic pathogens and also vaccines. Great, thank you very much. So lastly, I'll mention a few words about myself and my journal. Um, so I'm a professorial research fellow at the Australian Institute of Tropical Health and Medicine, James Cook University in Australia. And I'm a molecular immunologist working on the development of vaccines and immunotherapeutics for infectious and chronic diseases. I'm also the chief editor of the Frontiers in Immunology, the section for vaccines and molecular therapeutics. And the scope of that journal covers vaccines and molecular therapeutics against well-known as well as emerging pathogens for both human and animal health. And topics range from discovery science to preclinical research and development and a clinical evaluation with really an emphasis on new tools and innovative concepts in prophylactic or therapeutic intervention against disease. So after the introduction, I think we'll now move on to a set of questions. So what we've compiled for this editor's e-panel is a set of reflection questions and trying to initiate a set of discussions about the concept of virtual um, seminars. So first of all, I'd like to ask each of the panel members, really what was the most impactful thing to you about the event? So I guess I'll start home and uh, I'll start. And one of my uh, key take home messages from the whole virtual meeting was the speed at which candidate vaccines against newly emerging pathogens can be developed moving through the progress of pathogen discovery to preclinical development and clinical testing. And I thought that was a really impressive take home message that came from the, uh, from the panel discussions and from the presentations during the meeting. So I might continue on that. Um, I was also impressed specifically about the development of mRNA vaccine um, against SARS-CoV-2 in this case, but in general, um, um, on the other hand, I have to say I missed a little bit of fundamental research that is needed uh, before any vaccine is developed to hear the, this side of the, of the story. And um, on the virtual meeting itself, because it was my first, I actually was impressed by uh, technical organization uh, of this meeting and uh, I think the organizer did a very, very good job on that. Yeah, I think it was really interesting that the, um, the meeting covered all aspects of, of vaccinology and also uh, not focusing only on, of course, the recent COVID-19 uh, pandemic, but also expanding on uh, pathogens that are, uh, uh, you know, well known like malaria and TB and uh, showing all the recent advances in this, uh, um, in this field. Um, and, and I think I, it was, I was really impressed also 
particularly by the um, monoclonal antibodies side of the of the of the the meeting. So it's a very uh, I think interesting field, and uh, a lot a lot is going on there in terms of development of the antibodies and also recognition of the um, so antigen discovery. So to to make much better vaccines. And continuing on from that, I thought it was also really good the way there was a lot of some discussion on T cell vaccines, in particular, uh, Sandra Sete and the group that were really trying to identify novel T cell epitopes and trying to progress the field of vaccine development based on T cells. Um, I, I also agree with um, Shaco. I think that the advances that have been put forward by mRNA based vaccines are really, really impressive. You know, potentially have the, the potential to overcome some of the really big block, um, roadblocks in vaccine development so far. And the speed with which they can be developed is quite impressive when you think back to the um, SARS-CoV-2 virus coming from, you know, the original genetic sequence being discovered really at the beginning of 2020 and now being into clinical trials in the middle of 2020 is extremely impressive. Yeah, for me, it was also my first meeting and uh, I thought uh, the same it was very well organized and very well moderated. And what I found uh, also very impressive is um, to see how new technologies are applied to a relatively old uh, field. So advances in um, genetic sequencing and uh, new vaccine platforms um, were very impressive. Um, and also yeah, structural biology studies which help um, elucidate uh, yeah, viral uh, proteins almost at an atomic level. So uh, I think these were very significant uh, insights that I could get. So I, I also thought that an excellent part of the symposium was the calibre of the speakers who were able to participate in the program. Having Tony Fauci, for instance, give the keynote, this talk was absolutely fantastic and I know that that has been circulated and made publicly available. I, I would like to point out that also number of participants was amazing. And I think in any uh, in-person meeting that would be not possible, I think it was over 1,500 at some point that were listening to the talks. So that was also very impressive. Yes, so I think we're sort of getting into another aspect of the um, discussion, which is really the new um, virtual meeting format and what we thought about that. And as Jaco has just mentioned, I agree too, and I think the organisation of the meeting was outstanding. And one of the major attractions of this virtual meeting format, in my opinion, is the ability of people around the globe to participate. So representing a range of different career stages from students to early career, mid-career, as well as the established senior researchers. And I think in particular, uh, if international travel or even travel is um, needs to be considered in terms of attending conferences, that um, quite often the more junior scientists miss, miss out, whereas with this virtual format, it allows really anyone to participate from any career stage and anywhere in the globe, regardless of the time zone. So I think that's a fantastic advantage. I think the other attractive thing was obviously having a recording that was available so that if people were in different time zones and they could have the ability to listen to the selected recordings at a time that was convenient to them or that fitted in with their work schedule or their clinical schedule. So again, I think that's another advantage. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. And uh, I think that also the fact that people were allowed to uh, very easily to, uh, you know, um, uh, ask questions. Also, you know, in uh, in-person meetings, sometimes there is this awkward silence in which people, you know, uh, should uh, you know ask questions, but uh, you know they don't want to stand up and uh, and ask the question uh, you know in person, of course. And this is a very good format also for uh, for you know young scientists that sometimes they feel intimidated in confronting scientists that are much more experienced. And, uh, and so it's a good way for them to to relate to them and to to express their opinion and ask questions. And in fact, one thing that I've noticed from the virtual meetings that I've been associated with is that there seems to be a lot more questions for the speakers. And I think in part, as you say, it's you know, people 
don't have to stand up in public and they can just post questions on the chat room. Uh, and also the fact that the meeting was, were the, you know, the talks were recorded, but still uh, it was very nicely switched when this, the question should have been uh, asked. So that it was kind of a, a even though the, meeting, the, 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 uh, uh, the, the talks were not in, you know, live, but still uh, it was very easy for, for the audience to interact with the, with the people that participated. I also think that was very well organized, that um, chat rooms and questions and everything it was well, well, well prepared. And I agree with the aspect that these formats of meetings is more accessible to younger um, scientists or scientists from countries with not so well financial um, uh, status, let's say. Uh, and so that um, uh, scientists, the, the research can be uh, um, uh, spread uh, more uh, more than in the, in in the conferences that are in person. Yeah, I think the same, and uh, I also uh, think it's uh, valuable for, for example, parents with their young children or persons with disabilities who may be less able to travel. Um, to attend these conferences. So I think it's, uh, it's very valuable. So it sounds like we all agree. I think, you know, the one disadvantage of the virtual meeting format is the lack of personal relationships and, and face-to-face interactions and the ability to follow up on, um, to follow up on a topic of conversation with, with a speaker later on during the meeting or go to the pub and discuss your latest findings with with a colleague who you may have met or catch up with previous colleagues. So I think that is a disadvantage, but something that we need to overcome. I agree with you that uh, personal, you know, networking and uh, uh, discussion, one-one discussion, of course, is missing in this format and should be implemented somehow. Uh, I think still uh, this is a plus of an uh, in-person meeting because sometimes the then interesting uh, topics come when, uh, at least for editors, they come uh, when uh, the authors uh, are, I mean, are allowed to, to speak one, one, in one-one uh, discussions. In terms of your role as editors of journals, how do you think the virtual meeting format impacts that? Does it make it easier? Does it make it harder? Does it not affect it? I can go and say that um, I don't think uh, it impacts much. So to survey the field, um, it's more or less the same as in-person meeting, hearing the talks and, uh, and everything. But uh, again, we come back to the in-person communication with scientists, of course, uh, which is limited, uh, restricted to chat rooms or, or asking questions. And of course, then uh, global networking, um, uh, which is uh, given at uh, in-person conferences um, is limited now uh, with, with the virtual. Um, format. Yes, I agree in terms of, uh, you know, having an overview of the, of the field or uh, so the virtual meeting are definitely a positive, uh, an option, especially now with the limitations in terms of, you know, uh, um, traveling uh, and, uh, uh, but still the uh, networking and uh, uh, in-person discussion is, is you know, it's, it's a problem in terms for editors. Um, but, you know, it's more work from us potentially to reach out to the authors uh, before or, or after the meeting, try to set up some, you know, uh, Zoom chats or uh, uh, it's like a different way to approach the authors because, of course, you cannot, you know, talk to them over, over dinner, for example, because that's not happening. And it's less spontaneous, let's say, compared to what's happening in the, um, in the conferences. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I thought the forum sessions uh, in the virtual conference were very nice, but uh, I feel they could um, maybe be advertised even more so that more more people are aware of it and uh, join a conversation. Um, But for sure, in-person communications are key to form um, scientific relationships. And I think uh, um, virtual conferences... Uh, will definitely uh, become more and more common in the future. But uh, the in-person conferences are still extremely important and will also continue to exist. Yes, and I think perhaps over time as people become more comfortable with the virtual meeting format and the chat function, you know, people will start using the chat function a little bit more, which hopefully will try and address some of the shortcomings that we've just mentioned with regard to -to face-to-face communications.
assignment for forms, I think it's a, an interesting option. Uh, I don't think that everybody wants to discuss uh, openly, uh, you know, on, in a forum. So it's nice to, for general discussion, but in terms of, uh, from an editor point of view, uh, I don't think that anybody would discuss, you know, data or anything like this um, uh, so publicly, let's say. So it's more of an opinion uh, place where people can provide their opinion, but um, it's not really uh, the best option, I would say, for this other type of discussions. Yes, so um, I, I agree, and that, that therefore I think um, we or, or scientific community should focus on finding more ways to increase communication during virtual meetings. For example, having a tete a tete chat rooms or something where you can really personally meet with the with another scientist to discuss uh, um, data or, or, or his her work, um, video chats, chat, uh, different forms of chat rooms, and 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 or even after the meeting, uh, um, uh, having uh, again um, editor uh, editor media editor session or something like that, with the scientist would be uh, would be good. There may be an option with an I don't know an employment based. Uh meetings where you have like 15 minutes uh, slots where people can chat with the editors uh, in a more of a private you know uh, uh, setting would be uh, maybe easier. So I've heard that a lot of those ideas that we've just been talking about have actually been already considered by the organizers of virtual meetings and have been uh, are in the process of being implemented in various forms. So I suspect that in the future that we will see a lot of these ideas actually brought to reality which will be great. And that will really, really expand the virtual meeting format and really provide an excellent forum for, I think, the dissemination of science and the advancement of knowledge to the community. I believe that if uh, this uh, will be really implemented, uh, there is a future for these virtual conferences to be kept, uh, you know, like a, as an option uh, in, instead of, you know, switching completely back to, uh, you know, in-person meetings, because there is also like the environmental you know, impact that is much less um, prominent for virtual conferences. And I think that if there is uh, the possibility to have uh, a more of a one-one in-person uh, interaction in the virtual conferences, it would be really great. So it'll be very interesting to see how the field of meetings moves, moves forward post-COVID, because I totally agree. I think that there's going to be a mixture of virtual meetings and the face-to-face -face meetings. There's certainly a lot of advantage to these virtual meetings and people are really starting to realise the potential and the attractiveness of them and embrace them. So I suspect um, that there'll be quite a, um, quite a wide range of virtual meetings and also potentially more regular meetings. So rather than a once-a-year once conference on a specific topic, there might be more regular updates or even monthly smaller meetings. So rather than having a five-day meeting, have it sort of spread out more once a month, for instance. Yeah, there could also probably be like hybrid, hybrid approaches where you have um, like both physical and uh, virtual attendees um, participating in the conference. This would allow, um, yeah, a broader uh, set of people to attend a larger number of people, um, but also have uh, the in-person communication, at least for some. Yeah. So yeah, I um, think actually that uh, virtual meetings are um, actually the future um, of, of uh, meeting formats and these pandemics just ex accelerated the shift from the in-person to virtual meeting. Um, and this is not because of the, only of the pandemic, because this pandemic is going to end at some point. Uh, but I think uh, the climate change and um, uh, is uh, a, a big issue. And we have to, uh, as a scientific community, um, anyway, raise an awareness among people. Uh, of the impact of the climate, climate, climate change on, on the health, ecology, biodiversity, whatever you can think about. And uh, reducing traveling, of course, is one sign uh, that uh, um, uh, is uh, uh, good for a public uh, to see that we are taking care of, of this issue as well. But I still think that uh, a fine mixture, uh, 
with, uh, of uh, in-person and uh, virtual meetings should be established uh, because, um, again, we're coming to the personal communication, which is important and we are all humans and we like to personally communicate with other humans. So I think this is important too. Yeah, I agree. And also, the, I'm, I'm sure that um, uh, technology will help us to have uh, uh, more and more um, meetings that are live and where interaction is uh, in, not exactly the same as the one one in, in person, like in in-person meetings, but uh, a little bit more spontaneous, let's say, compared to the recorded talks and the separate questions. So I'm sure that the technology will come up to help us. I think the other aspect that is lacking from the virtual meetings is that quite often, at least from our side of the world, uh, junior scientists quite will go to an international meeting and seek job, job opportunities and meet with potential employers and present their resume. So that's obviously something that is not possible in the virtual meeting format and would also be very challenged trying to do it virtually. But... That's something that um, people are going to have to learn how to deal with because at the moment there's not really a choice. Yes, also for us interacting with young scientists is important as, as well as uh, interacting with you know, more established scientists, uh, you know, also because it, they are the scientists of the future, of course, and they need to know and to, to be aware of the journals and how the journal works and what we are looking for and, you know, recruit you know, anything that is related to um, the editorial process. So this is definitely missing in the, at least in the meeting we attended. But as you said, this would be implemented probably and would be easier in the future. So it sounds like there's a lot of advantages for the virtual meetings. And the one big disadvantage is the lack of face-to-face -face communication. So that's something that as we mentioned, will have to be overcome. And there's obviously strategies going on in the background to overcome that. So overall, it sounds like the virtual meeting format is excellent for science. So another advantage of the virtual meetings is not only the younger scientists, but it's also the ability of scientists from the developing countries to be able to participate. So I know that that's a big problem with the number of the number of the countries and particularly in the areas of um, you know, tropical diseases where funding is extremely limited. So yes, I agree. And as I mentioned before, I think this is reflected in the numbers of participants uh, of this uh, virtual meeting, for example. It was really amazing to see that 1,500 or more people are listening to a session or a talk. I also agree that this will be the future and uh, the shift um, has had was made uh, quite rapidly now in face of this pandemic to vir towards virtual meetings. But I'm sure... Uh, uh, within the next um, couple of years, months, um, virtual meetings will significantly improve. The options will improve to interact with other scientists, also younger scientists. And um, I'm quite optimistic, but I, I still think that it will be, um, as we already said, a mixture of uh, both formats, virtual and also in person. Any other thoughts that anyone has that they would like to communicate? I just would like to thank the organizer because it, I'm sure it was really challenging because this meeting was actually supposed to be in Florence. So I think that switching an in-person meeting to uh, a virtual meeting so fast uh, was really a great opportunity, especially because the topic is so important and everybody was probably looking forward also to the COVID side of it. Uh, and they did a, an, an excellent job to, to put together a panel uh, of speakers, really impressive and uh, yeah, really great organization. Yes, from my side also, all congratulations to the organizer. It was really good meeting. From my side, the same. <clears throat> it was excellently organized and excellently, excellently moderated. Um, I think it was a pure success. And also for me, I think it was absolutely phenomenal how, how um, impressive it was, particularly given the short notice and the challenges and learning how to do this whole new virtual meeting format. So congratulations all around. So and I think this has been a very interesting discussion. It's obvious from all of our comments that we think that the virtual meeting format has been a great success and that there is a lot of potential and in the future virtual meetings are here to stay, but hopefully combined with some face-to-face -face meetings. But I think congratulations to the organisers of the virtual meeting format. We look forward to the many advances that 
seem to be coming. And I just want to lastly thank all of you participants for your time and your thoughts and for what has been a very um, informative and pleasant discussion. So I wish you all the best and hope to see you in the in face-to-face -face in the flesh sometime in the future. Thank you.